you know, have Tom Steenson, which is a lawyer, um, put him as a, as a le- as a leader. Um, I just don't want to see another person like Sadat being a leadership role there. So, and with that, I'll give it to someone else. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Someone want to go next? No, I'm, I'm not going to say anything for now. I'm just going to let other people talk for mm-hmm. see what other people want to say. Okay, uh, I guess since we've got anything, again, uh, my big concern is on the foreclosure is- issues. Again, I think the auditors have handled that well over the years to have an understanding that when we have a recession and various people are having different reasons on why certain liens might be run up, that we also have to understand that we look at the problem behind that. If we're not actually having communication with the people themselves, we don't know where they are. Are they having mental health issues? Are they having other issues in their life? Have they gone through bankruptcy? Are the <coughs> beginning to affect them in a negative way? Have they been driven out of their neighborhoods because maybe disgruntled neighbors that live on each side of them don't want them in the neighborhoods and have utilized nuisance liens as a technique to remove certain people? Uh, these are all things to take in consideration before we want to throw them out in the limelight, possibly shame them. And maybe there's a lot of circumstances behind why they're in this situation. And we need to be very cautious on how we deal with people that are having serious issues on maybe losing their properties because from a PR standpoint, this can get very interesting to the city because in the past it's been kind of handled, maybe reduce some of the liens, negotiate with the people in a reasonable manner, but when you start literally coming in and trying to take their properties out from under them, and then again my understanding, exercising the first right to purchase before the uh, foreclosure actually goes through, uh, we need to make sure we remain impartial at 100% impartial. I would like to see more of the banks being foreclosed on because they're used to foreclosing on people and, and they have plenty of money to pay their positions off. So I'd like that to be focused on first and again negotiating in a reasonable manner with the private parties and having a very clear understanding that communication hasn't been made don't proceed on that property or that individual till we have a clear understanding this is mental health, physical health, what is the problem on why they're not communicating. In the past, as you know, we had commissioners before that did what would be the use of the term selective enforcement. And we have to be very careful on making sure this isn't happening, making sure that I noticed on this five foreclosures Two individuals, if you look at their last names, you might begin to think, and well, what's going on here? And we need to watch this very close to make sure that these people are not being run out of neighborhoods in this city. And it's something we need to watch very close to have that understanding because that is the first technique a neighbor will use. And I was just watching this in another state. An individual had a, a child that was autistic. The neighbors had a real problem with that individual living next door to them. They sued the neighbor and said, your child is a nuisance. And we have to be very cautious on people thinking they can use nuisance liens or the word nuisance to remove people out of the neighborhoods they don't think belong. And that's why I'm saying if you start to push this too aggressively and people think you're taking their properties from them, and people thinking they're being treated unfairly, it's gonna end up in more litigation. But if you focus on the banks first, they'll normally just probably pay it off and, and, and they have the funds to do it. But if you step on people that don't, and they have other reasons why they're trying to hold on to these properties, I think you're opening up something here that could be 
a PR nightmare, a litigation nightmare, and I don't think it's a good direction to go at this time because I don't think the city needs that extra amount of money that bad, but you can negotiate in a reasonable manner. So that's kind of my position on the foreclosure issue. Now, just real fast, and I don't know how much time I have, just on the, I want to see Mr. O'Day end up stepping down. If he did, in fact, lie to a sheriff, why he's even trying to hold on, I don't even understand what his thinking is. And the, the adage is, if you shoot your friend in the back, just be honest with what happened. If he was honest, I don't think we'd even have an issue with him. Mistakes happen. Hunting accidents happen. This is really about, did he tell the truth to the sheriff? And what? Why would anybody ever try to lie about something like that to your friend? Doesn't make any sense to me. So, in my opinion, uh, what's going on here is not a good situation for the city. And a face to face talk with him, if in fact he did lie, he should just step down. He should retire. Don't drag the city through any farther on this. Step down now and understand the truth is what you should be focusing on and if you would have stated the truth up front this issue would have been long past by now and he would have still been police chief so that's just my opinion thank you thanks like okay. i think what uh <coughs> lightning close with touches on a thing that's really present in our talk maybe more than our actions in city council and that is equity in that <coughs> Chief O'Day, and really anybody covering the police uh, union contract, which I do understand they're not, he's not under the union contract, but whether you're a, uh, a high-ranking city official or a, a union contract employed city official, you have a huge structure protecting your rights that ordinary citizens don't have. Supposedly we have, you know, a diligent just justice system about the Constitution, but I think if you're honest with yourself and have honest conversations with people in the city, they'll know that Chief O'Day is getting a velvet glove treatment that Glenn Waco and Marcus Allen Cooper did not get when there was a shooting near Salt and Straw near Alberta. They, he's getting a special elite edition of justice that Teresa Rayford didn't get when dozens of police cars came to the corner of Division and 82nd. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the city, and as far as the changes that come along with that, I think mm -hmm. even though there was some post-occupy assessment of how the city and the police force deals with civil disobedience, I think in retrospect there's still been some major problems in the past three years. Um, a huge amount, the time of mm -hmm. six jurors